the principal of the Clinton School, John Levin. The Lieutenant Governor, Antonio Delgado. And please join me in welcoming the 57th Governor of the great state of New York, Governor Kathy Hochul. Good morning. Uh, welcome to the Clinton School. Thank you so much for making the time this morning. Uh, welcome to uh, Governor Hochul, Mayor Adams, and all the electives that have worked so hard on this bill. Uh, this is a new, a relatively new building, so we have uh, space for bike parking, so kids are always biking and walking to school. And so uh, safety and safety in the streets is always on my mind when I do arrival in the morning, so I'm happy that we're taking a step forward today uh, with that, so thank you very much. Please welcome to the podium, Governor Kathy Hochul. Good morning, everyone. I can't tell whether you're so excited because the governor and the mayor are here or because you're almost done with school. Uh, you can be honest about it. Uh, great to be here at this, the Clinton School. You have an incredible reputation, you know that. Uh, people know that you're getting a first-rate education, the International Baccalaureate. That is a very big deal, and you are going to be well-positioned to be launched into the whole new world based on the educational experience you had right here. So, so why don't we take a second and give a round of applause to your great principal, our great leader, John Levin, who has been here for 11 years. Thank you. There you go. There you go, principal. And to all the great teachers and the administrators who make this happen, so I, I'm so glad to be with you here today. Also joined by my partner in government, New York's Lieutenant Governor Antonio Delgado. Please raise your hand. Uh, he used to play semi-pro basketball, so if you got a basketball, he might just be looking for the, the hoops here. Uh, also, uh, the mayor of New York City, Eric Adams, has done such an incredible job in such a short time, and he is so focused on safety, as am I, whether it's safety from gun violence or it's safety in the streets so when you're walking or riding your bike to school, you don't have to worry. So we are working together as true partners. Thank you, Mayor Adams, for all you do. We also have leaders in our legislature, because if you want to get a bill passed, you remember this from your, yes, you do, you remember all this. Okay, when I was a kid, there was a show called uh, uh, Schoolhouse Rock. You guys, you watch, are they still watching that? Those are those really old reruns. <laughs> uh, but I am a bill, right? Sitting here on Capitol Hill, believe it or not, that was one of the inspirations of why I wanted to go work on Capitol Hill. I love that show. Uh, but we have our leaders in our state legislature who actually have to pass the bills, get them passed in both houses, the Assembly and the Senate. They come together, and then what we do is what you're going to witness here today, and very few people have seen this, an actual bill signing. So that's what I'll be doing right now. But it happened because we have Senator Andrew Gonardis in our state Senate for championing this in the Senate, and your very own Assemblymember Deborah Glick, who's an extraordinary leader as well. And then also what you have are what we call advocates, people who are so deeply passionate about a cause that even though they did not set out on their life's journey to be focused on an issue, whether it's public safety, gun safety, school safety, street safety, something happens in their life and they feel compelled to act and they step forward, sometimes having to set aside enormous pain in their own lives. And that's what we have in Amy Cohen. And I wanna thank her for being the co-founder of the Families for Safe Streets and leading the charge on so many initiatives. And Amy, I don't know how we ever quantify how many lives have been saved, but I'm telling you, you have been instrumental in saving lives. So let's give her a round of applause for all the work she does. So as I mentioned, the mayor and I and others are laser focused on safety, public safety, doing it on many fronts. And as I mentioned of gun violence, we are taking strong, bold action to protect people from the scourge of gun violence, something you read about, you hear about all too often, not just in our cities, but throughout this country. But also, I just want to mention something that happened yesterday, 
as your students, you're paying attention to all the news, you're reading the papers, you're seeing social media accounts of what happened in Washington. Two things happened in Washington yesterday. One very positive, that for the first time in 30 years, the United States Senate under the leadership of Majority Leader Chuck Schumer, our very own Senator from the state of New York, took a step that has not been done in decades and made some progress toward gun safety legislation. That is a good thing. That is a very good thing. That happened yesterday. But across the street, in the Supreme Court of the United States of America, something very bad happened, where they struck down a law that we had in place, not just in the last couple of weeks. That law has been on the books for over 100 years to say that the state has a right to decide whether or not you should be able to have a concealed carry permit. What does that mean? You can have a legal permit to leave the gun in your home if you meet background checks, which are very rigorous, or certain people are eligible to be able to carry the gun with them. Now, if you're a security guard, that's okay. Someone has a threat against you, that's probably okay. But we didn't think that people should just have a right to walk around like the Wild West and carry guns, right? That makes sense. And we put that forward, not I, it happened long before, before my grandparents were little kids. So this is how long it's been on the books. The Supreme Court yesterday ignoring the fact that we have a nationwide gun violence epidemic, took away the state's right to be able to make that determination on who should have the ability to hide a gun on them. That's what it can say, hide a gun on you. So, good news, bad news. Today is good news again. Today is good news again. Today we're gonna to make some real progress and do something that we believe is critically important. And, this is on top of something else we did to protect you in schools, not just on the streets, but in schools. We're making our streets safer, our communities safer. We're also making our schools safer. Yesterday, I took a pen similar to this, bill signing, of something called Alyssa's Law. And students, you need to know who Alyssa is because I have in my office now the picture of her that her grandparents gave me yesterday. She lost her life during the school shooting at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas down in Florida, Parkland School, in a community called Parkland. What's the connection to New York? Alyssa was a 14-year-old gunned down. She was born in Queens. She lived in Florida, but she lived from here. Her grandparents live here. And also in the audience, as we were doing this bill signing to enshrine a, a law that has her name, and I'll explain what that is in a second, also was the parents of their teacher, their teacher was Scott, a young man, maybe 30 years old, was a teacher at that school. He grew up on Long Island, moved to Florida. So there is a connection to this violence and what we're trying to do here today. We signed it to require or ask schools to consider the installation of silent alarms. If something bad happens in a school, you want someone to notify the law enforcement immediately. So that's what we talked about. So we signed that yesterday. So we're protecting people in our communities, our subways, our streets, our schools, and is there another way to keep kids, kids safe? Yes, yes, and that's what today is all about. How else we can keep you and the people who live in these communities safe? We know there's been real aggressive driving. I don't know what's happening, but people are just feeling uh, out of control sometimes. The traffic violence is out of hand, and too many kids, you know, students, as we see in this room, Walking to school, you have a right to walk to school. It's healthy, it's good. You ride your bike to school, it's kind of fun. I ride my bike all the time. Um, I always wear my helmet. But we've had students actually killed walking to school because they weren't protected. 24 in the last decade. And we have statistics that show that during the 8 a.m. hour, when a lot of you are coming to school, when there's thousands of students going into their buildings, there's 57% more crashes and 25% more injuries in streets near schools. So you can't ignore the statistics. Something bad is happening out there. So then we say, well, what do we do? Kids shouldn't risk getting hurt just going to school. And traffic violence isn't just confined to school hours. I mean, you come for after school activities, evening activities, there's other people around the neighborhood, there's a playground in the other schools, kids wanna play. And at night when it's hard to see, Weekends, people driving them more and more aggressively. So all this has actually gotten worse since COVID. I don't want to blame COVID for everything, but there is a root cause where people have just changed their character, it seems. 
People are less patient with others. They're less kind. They're less respectful. We can get back to that. Don't give up, young people. Don't give up. That was just a temporary setback. But parents also deserve the peace of mind to know that their children will be safe. So Amy Cohen, I mentioned her, is a parent who knows the sadness of this all too well. She lost her son, Sammy, back in 2013 when he was hit by a van in the neighborhood. And she has channeled this grief, this horrible grief, and turned it into a force, a force you reckon with, a force for change. And she started something called Families for Safe Streets. And I want to say New York owes you a tremendous debt of gratitude, Amy, and to all your members. For all your members, please raise your hands. All of you have been the activists for such a long time. Thank you. So what are we doing here today, then? How do we take the energy behind this, the advocacy, the desire of the mayor and I and other elected officials, Councilmember Rivera and others, to make sure that we are safe, as well as our partners in state government who I recognize? Uh, we are going to sign a bill that will authorize New York City's school zone speed limit camera program, allow that to be operated all day, every day, 24 hours, 365 days a year, and this law will be in effect till 2025. And I want to thank the sponsors, again, Senator Guinardis, Slammer Deborah Glick, for their leadership in making this happen. We know they work, they, we know they slow cars down, we know people have to pay attention, and we want that to happen. So we're going to continue this protection all year round. That's for you and your fellow students. That's how you start protecting people in their schools, classrooms, but definitely on their way to school. So with that, I'd like to announce that we're going to be signing this. I'd like to invite our mayor up, uh, our mayor who's doing an extraordinary job, and you'll hear from him how important your safety is to him. So thank you, everyone, for being here today and witnessing a bill signing, and to all the uh, leaders, the elected officials, the advocates, the champions of making our streets safe right here in New York. Thank you very much. And with that, <laughs> Mayor Adams. Really, really an, an exciting uh, moment, but also a teaching moment, a moment where I believe uh, Amy has uh, really inspired many of us, as well as the, the group's membership. You know, I remember as a child, uh, mom saying, you know, baby, if you live long enough, you're going to have some dark and painful moments. How do you turn pain into purpose? And that's really the question that we need to continue to symbolize and show our young people as you go through this journey, when you leave a school and take on the awesome responsibility of adulthood. And even now, you're not leaders of tomorrow, you're leaders of today. And when you feel the painful moment, how do you turn into purposeful moments? And that's what was done. When I march in eight walks, uh, it's because people lost their loved ones to HIV and AIDS. When I march uh, to ovarian cancer, it is people who lost loved ones uh, to a cancer. All of the things that you see, all of the inspiration from change uh, comes from a painful moment. And if you live long enough, as mom stated, you're going to find painful moments and you're going to find dark moments. And you're going to make that decision if those dark moments are burials or plantings, uh, families for safe streets, uh, they took their dark moments and they stated that other families should not have to experience that and they turned it into purposeful moments. And when Andrew and Deborah, when they saw this and heard and listened, uh, they decided to come together in both houses, in the Senate and the Assembly, and said, how do we do something legislatively where the numbers are just right? I mean, why do we say go to school and learn how to look at the numbers and the facts, and then we ignore them when it's time to put in place the, gov the governance or the laws that are impacting that? 72% of the fatalities were taking place when the cameras were not operating. That's basic math. Uh, you don't have to be a mathematical expert to say, what do, you do, what do we do differently? And so the teamship between transportation authority, uh, when you look at a Family for Safe Streets, and so many other advocates who experienced this horrific uh, issue uh, decided uh, to come together and make a difference. And, but you could come with the greatest ideas possible, 
but if they fall on deaf ears, you've wasted your time. Fortunate for us, we had a governor that listened. We had a governor that had enough compassion to state that this is logical, this makes sense, and let's get it done. And it was a hard fought battle, because some people thought that cameras were a way of being punitive. When it was, it was not. It was a way of deterrence. Because once you get that ticket one time, you're not gonna speed again. And then it's the halo effect that you're not going to speed in the area. So it's about using a tool to change and retool how we think and how we do the right things. And so I'm encouraged with the school, with your principal, I'm encouraged. There's a question mark that lingers over our entire existence because of what is happening. But when you walk into a school like this, that question mark turns into an exclamation point. We're going to be all right. We're going to be all right. Because you are focused, you're driven, uh, you understand what you want. I don't know if we've ever had a generation of young people like the generation of today. And don't kid yourself. Adults don't blow the winds of change. <laughs> they don't. They like to act like they do. But the reality is, if you look from the civil rights era, if you look for the wars that have been protested, if you look for all the changes we have ever experienced globally, it has been young people like you. You blow the winds of change. Today, this piece of legislation is saying to you, take a deep breath and blow the globe in a direction that you want it to go into. I'm so excited about the future. And the country is a great place. But the country can only be great because of one thing. Because of New York City. <laughs> we, 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 we are the best of the best. We are America's city. And the young people in this city, everyone duplicates you. Everyone wants to be like you. Everyone wants to look at your music, your hairstyle, your dance, your culture, your food. It all starts right here in New York. So this bill is going to cascade throughout the entire country. And it's going to say it's possible to marry technology with safety. And we have a lot of challenges in front of us. Let's not kid ourselves. But I know we're going to defeat those challenges because of the partnerships of the two. I'm 62 years old. We will push back on a lot of things. You're supposed to push back on me. I push back on my parents. My parents push back on their parents. That's how change happened. We're not supposed to agree, but we're not supposed to be disagreeable. When we come together, we can do this. We can pass laws that protect us. That is what's great about this moment. And so I too, I wanna to thank Andrew and Deborah for having the foresight, the vision to not give up and say we can make this happen. And to the families of Safe Streets, I knocked on a lot of doors in my time as a police officer. And I told family members that their loved ones were not coming home. And there was no consolation if, if it was because of a medal from a gun bullet or the medal from a speeding reckless driver. The pain is the pain, and you relive it. Every time you hear a horn, every time you hear of another person that loses a loved one, every time you hear a car break hard, you, you relive it. That's the reality. But what you're doing today is you're taking that reality out of the lives of those people who are potentially the victims of vehicle crashes. And so on behalf of all of our babies and our families, I want to say thank you. New York State is a better place because we came together as lawmakers, as advocates, and as a governor. Legislate, negotiate, and, and agitate. And you agitated, and now we got the bill done. Thank you. Please welcome to the podium, Senator Andrew Gennardis. Good morning, everyone. Um, I'm State Senator Andrew Gennardis from Brooklyn. Thank you for letting me come into Manhattan today to join you for today's bill signing. Uh, I want to thank the governor, lieutenant governor, and mayor for their steadfast support uh, of this bill. Uh, and of course, my assembly co-sponsor, Assemblywoman Deborah Glick. 
I remember in 2013 joining a protest in Bay Ridge to get the first pilot program for a speed camera in a school zone turned on. We were fighting then for 20 cameras to be operational from 7 a.m. to 4 p.m. It was nine years ago. And tonight at 10.01, for the first time since cameras were put on New York City streets, the cameras are not going to be turned off ever. That's progress. That's progress. And there are so many thoughts and emotions I have about this. I think about my grandmother who lost her daughter to a traffic crash before I was even born. A 12-year-old daughter killed in a car crash. And the pain of that loss, like the mayor said, never fully goes away. But our job is to turn that pain into something real meaningful. And I think about one of my favorite quotes from a Greek poet, you know, Aeschylus, who said, even in our sleep, pain which can't forget falls drop by drop upon the heart until in our own despair and against our will comes wisdom through the awesome grace of God. Wisdom. Being able to look at the facts and the data to know where crashes are happening, when they're happening, and to know how to stop them. That's wisdom. And so because of the pain that we've all felt over losing loved ones, we've been able to take that, look at the data, and then pass a law and sign that law today that's going to keep people safe. And I could not be more prouder of this effort. And I want to thank the governor for signing this legislation. I want to thank her for her support and the mayor and everyone who helped make this possible, but especially our advocates, those who have been marching in the streets and knocking on doors and taking phone calls and putting you all front and center in the campaign to keep everybody safe. Thank you very much. Please welcome to the podium Assembly Member Deborah Glick. I'm extremely happy to be here today. I didn't, I wasn't sure it was going to happen. So I really want to thank the governor and the mayor for the support that we've gotten to ensure that we could make New York City streets safer. It has been a long journey, one that should have been much shorter. And you will learn in your lives that coming together and building consensus is not always an easy thing, and it's certainly not a quick thing. But it is important that we not stay in our separate corners and insist 100% on what we want, and then nothing gets done. This journey to start with speed cameras in a few places demonstrated, it was a demonstration project, it demonstrated the efficacy of this technology. But it is sometimes hard to move people who have other notions. They believe that the city only wants to raise money. Well, I told my colleagues who were resistant, the city isn't in the car with you. The city isn't controlling your foot on the accelerator. If you don't want to get a ticket, don't speed. It's pretty simple. When somebody is driving extremely fast, a pedestrian has no chance. No chance. They can't get out of the way, and they can't recover from their injuries. If you are going slowly, first of all, you might see that person and avoid the crash to begin with. Traffic violence has increased, and we have to increase our response to it. And that's what we're doing today. We are saying that we have had a decent program, but it had gaps. It had insufficiency. And when you see insufficiency, you don't just throw up your hands and say, well, I guess that's the best we can do. You think about what's lacking. What what could we do better to ensure that we close the gaps? And the most important thing was to ensure that the cameras never turn off. And I am grateful to 
the co-sponsor in the Senate. Andrew and I have worked on a number of bills together, uh, and we've both had frustrations in our respective chambers, but we have stayed the course, and we have worked with really the most incredible advocates. It's very hard not to get choked up when you meet with people who have lost their loved ones because of somebody else's stupidity. Through no era of their own, they have had people taken away from them because of somebody being distracted, somebody being angry, somebody taking out their frustrations on our streets. That is wrong, an indication of how much more we need to do around mental health, for sure. But it's also how we have to modify behavior. And you modify behavior, unfortunately, in this society by costing people money. And so today, thank you, Governor, you're going to sign a bill that is going to save so many more lives. And it is going to be a beacon across the country that we can make change in the biggest city in this country, in the most important city, as the mayor has been clear about. <laughs> and we will send a message that we can make change, and that change can, cha can save lives. And again, families for safe streets. You have been a, just an inspiration, an inspiration of what we can do when we take our pain and put it towards a unified message that we can do better. And I thank all of you for being here today and especially all of the advocates for sticking with it. You've come to Albany repeatedly. You've had frustrations in coming to Albany, haven't we all? Um, and you have made today possible. So thank you very much. Please welcome to the podium, Amy Cohen. Three years ago, I stood with then Lieutenant Governor, uh, Governor Hochul at the middle school my son had attended to press for the first reauthorization of the speed camera program Sammy was in eighth grade, oh. like all of you. But he never got to finish his eighth grade year. Soon after he was killed, just a few blocks from his school, two other of his classmates were killed in separate crashes. A short while later, I stood with the governor and mayor to reauthorize the program. And here's what I said then, and I say it again now. After years of fighting for this historic moment, I feel almost at a loss for what to say. I've counted the days publicly since Sammy died. It's still hard nine years later. I share that there is not even a word for losing your child. We are not widows or orphans. We are just namelessly in pain. I've read Sammy's poignant last school assignment on leadership and his desire to be referred to as Sam, not Sammy, which I only learned after he died. I've shared the unimaginable pain of enduring Mother's Day, his birthday, the day he died, and the never-ending markers of the things he will never get to do. Just last month, he should have graduated from college. All of us in Families for Safe Streets, and all of you, please hold up your pictures. We've lost our family members, have been seriously injured in crashes. We've poured out our hearts. We've undertaken Herculean efforts when just getting out of bed seems like a feat on many days. 
our collective efforts with all of you here today have led to this life-saving victory. And it's my honor, all of our honor, to stand today with Governor Hochul and Mayor Adams. We're so grateful to the bill sponsors, Assemblymember Glick, Senator Gennardis, and so many others. But there's more to do. Every day in New York State, three people, like my son, like Allie, like Fabiola's son, like so many others, are killed in a crash, and many, many more suffer life-altering injuries. We will change the culture of reckless driving by changing laws and policies. We need to end the pain and suffering. The scale of our individual grief is beyond description. The five letters, G-R-I-E-F, do not appropriately capture the grand canyon-sized chasm that separates the two parts of our lives, the before and the after. And this giant hole that creates ripples of pain and suffering outward is fighting for change. So today we celebrate, but we will always demand more. Thank you. Please welcome to the podium, Lieutenant Governor Antonio Delgado. Good morning. It's good to be here. Um, I want to first just, uh, I'm here to bring us home, if you don't know. I'm the last speaker, just so you know, okay? Before we, uh, we have this, the bill signing, I want to thank the governor uh, for her leadership, uh, the mayor, Senator Granaris, Assemblywoman uh, Glick, the Principal Levin, and, and Amy, thank you, uh, and all the, the advocates uh, for families, for safe streets. I'm a parent. I have twin boys, identical twin boys. They're eight years old. Um, and so to hear you speak about the loss and the grief uh, cuts right to the heart. Uh, but as the mayor talked about, you know, super beyond uh, grateful for the way in which you and all of the parents who've uh, had to endure this um, this type of pain have turned it into purpose uh, to better our society, uh, to improve our society, uh, to protect our children, to protect uh, our families. Um, and I'm just going to say this. I know it's your last day of school, right? It's pretty exciting. No? Not the last day? Yes for some? I see heads yes, some no. All right, so kind of in between. So some are happy, some are kind of waiting. All right. Um, you know, uh, it was talked about by the governor, you know, this is a process. Everybody talked about it, right? You got to go through negotiation and you know you got to work through legislation and ultimately it leads into a bill signing but fundamentally what we're talking about democracy democracy which is a pretty cool thing i'd argue it's probably the best idea we've come up with in at least top three or four just this idea that everybody can actually vote and has a fair uh, shake at having a say in in society um, and so as you come of age and, and enter into your own adulthood and think about uh, you know, what it means to be a part of a democracy. This is what it looks like when you can sit down and, and effectuate law that can affect people's lives in a positive way. And in a diverse society, too, which makes it more challenging when you've got different perspectives, different races, different cultures, different religions, sexual orientations, all of it coming together. All of it coming together. And figuring out how can we live and give everybody an equal shot at this. So this is what's really good about this. It's democracy in action. Never forget that. Uh, and so with that, I'm happy to uh, bring everybody to the front here for the, for the bill signing. How about it? We good? We ask that all in attendance please remain seated during the bill signing. Thank you.
my teachers tried. I was just a little bit of a rebellious child. Don't worry, now they type everything. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> that used to just be for girls when you became a keyboard. That's right. That's right. That's right. Yeah, they made it sound when the boys could do it. <laughs>